morning. I wanted to bring you guys out into my garden. One, we just added another five beds. I don't know if you can see them, but five beds. We're gonna do some straight ones across here and along the border where you see a lot of that mowed grass. There's, and then those tufts of grass. That's actually our property line there and we're gonna have it trenched. After it's trenched, we'll add more beds over there. But I mean, what is it? We have six, 12, 18 raised beds that we've added here, 19, 20, 21. So we've added 21 raised beds this year so far and we are well on our way of meeting our goal. But today's video is about pruning tomatoes. So these are my tomatoes. Remember I was having a problem with them all and they weren't um, greening up. I had a nice and so I did an organic nice and fertilizer. So they did really well. I mean, some of them are a little slow, but they need to be pruned. I don't know if you know this or not, but tomatoes have to be pruned. Like cucumbers also, zucchinis, and we're gonna do tomatoes today. And I'll talk about those other plants later, but I thought I would show you guys how to prune tomatoes. So let me grab my scissors. up here so I wanted to talk a little bit about tomatoes you're gonna to see that this branch right here we have one shoot coming up and the leaves are pointing down so in order for good airflow in tomatoes especially if you plant them close like this you need really good airflow um, so this is something that you would want to prune so is this and I'll go into more detail about that in just a minute up here up here you're going to see the blossoms right for new tomatoes coming in we want anything underneath the blossom the first blossom on the branch can essentially be pruned now these are suckers here and you would want to prune them if you don't want growth from that far down so for instance this branch here i'm even though it has blossoms i'm going to actually prune it because it's going to create it starts down here and it's gonna create problems for my other ones, so I'm just gonna cut it off, okay? Um, this is a sucker here, and this is, so I'm gonna actually cut those off because I don't want my plant to have growth down by the base. I need good airflow. So we're just gonna, I don't know if you guys can even see. So here's this one, that's the sucker. Um, I'm actually going to leave that sucker because I don't mind it growing up there, but I don't want the branch. So, same here. I don't want that sucker or that branch. We're going to... Good airflow is really, really important for tomatoes. Sorry about that. My camera is not working right. It doesn't work right in the sun very well. So, this is that one plant I was talking about, and I think I was talking about it when the camera turned off. Is it bent over? Well, if you look along the edges of the root here, um, um, you'll see these little hairs. These are actually baby roots. So you can take this plant. Now I've trimmed everything off of it and we can actually put this into the soil and cover it up and it becomes two plants. And those roots will dig down and bring even more nutrients. I left these top ones because these top ones can create their own tomato branch all right so you can see that I've been uh, pruning and this is what it will look like and I know they look sparse right now but they don't need more leaves than that at this time so while I'm in here I pull any weeds because remember we need good airflow so if you come along here you'll see this one here and this is a good example of too much undergrowth right so we're going to go ahead and trim all along these and, get... and we're below the blossom still i'm going to trim this one and leave that sucker on there because that'll create a taller branch and i'm going to trim this one we're gonna have great airflow around that. This one in the middle 
is also very important that it has great airflow. So we're going to go ahead and trim along the base. And remember, just want to take off as much around foliage around the base as possible for airflow to prevent root rot and pests. Right? I'm going to go ahead and take that one. We don't need it. So now you'll see the difference between these ones that we've pruned and these ones that we haven't. The ones that we have in here, when the wind comes through, yes, they're more sturdy. However, the wind doesn't keep the branches dried out. Therefore, we'll have rot if we don't get it under control. This allows the sun to hit these top branches, which give the, the tomatoes the richness and the vitamins that they need. So we're going to go ahead and prune some more. And I'll talk in and out. Edward is doing all the recording for me, so thanks, babe. Mm -hmm. uh, because I can't get the camera to work <laughs> so and I never know when it turns off so again while we're pruning and fussing around plants we also want to prune this one's an, a lot like the other one that was bent over so if you see this here we got the root going along the ground here so we're gonna go ahead and trim all these ones that are below because I don't necessarily want a tomato plant right there, we're going to even take off this one here. And I'm going to leave this one on. And I'll show you guys in a minute. So we go all the way around. Pruning anything that's touching the ground. And lower leaves. Right? And I'm going to do that one. And we're going to prune here here and because this is so tall and lanky we're going to go ahead and dig down bury the root like we did on the other one and we're going to give ourselves another tomato plant so we got I would have done this earlier, but I wanted to make a video and have been busy with other things. So normally I would have done this earlier so we didn't have so much, but we have some, some rainy weather coming in with some hot weather and it's perfect time to get a good airflow in. I'm going to leave this one because I want it to grow up, right? That's what suckers do. Suckers give you opportunity to grow up higher and taller branches below don't really collect the sunlight that's needed in order to bring nutrients so that's how you 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 prune based on where you want your plants to go now all of these tomato plants we're, are going to need support and i'll have to figure that out later i have a few days <laughs> to figure that out but all in all we could possibly take stakes on either side and run string and just string them all together so that they're they have some more stability i'm not sure how that's going to work we'll figure it out <laughs> yeah <clears throat> we'll come up with a plan anyway so this one's nice i'm going to take this branch off it's going towards the center this one is just huge now this tomato plant probably needs to be pruned like weeks ago but we're going to go ahead take off at the bottom right even if it has blossoms because too much is not a good thing, right? So we're going to go ahead and take some pretty hefty branches because it's huge. And this one will create problems for all my other tomato plants. I imagine it'll help lighten the load on that. That one. Plant. Yes. I will. Leave that sucker. There we go. And now the energy is going to go into producing fruit and not um, branches. Does that make sense? It's like you see this over here. It's all nicely thinned out. It's a rat's nest over here. This one I really severely thinned back. Um, 
one that's very, very healthy. Now, you might want to say, why am I not taking some of these branches like this, right, and planting it because it has these little hairs? Well, one, I don't have the space in my bed. Two, um, this would ha would be like starting a new plant altogether. And my growing season to get ripe tomatoes is not long enough and I don't have a greenhouse. So if I had a greenhouse in a longer season, I could essentially put this in some dirt like I did the other ones with maybe a little bit of root starter and start another tomato plant that's already well on its way. But I don't have the season or the greenhouse. Just a tip, just a little tip. All right. So what you're saying is I need to make you a greenhouse. Yes, but not this year. <laughs> uh, we have so many projects and so many things going on. There's some important things that need to happen that are not garden related. You know, like we need to get a woodshed built and mm -hmm. um, some other things. So, all right. Again, we pull weeds while we're in here. Now, raised beds weeding is so easy. Tony what? And that one. It's so easy just to come in and ah! oh, there was a spider on me. Gross. <laughs> oh. Exciting times out here in the garden. No, it's not exciting. Oh. Gross. So this one has down by the roots you can see it has two branches that come off the base I'm gonna leave this one and just gonna prune because this is on the outer edge so though it's technically part of the same plant it's growing as an independent along the base and taking off Airflow, airflow, airflow. I can't say it enough with tomatoes. I like that. She looked beautiful. There we go. Looks like there's just a few left. Yeah, I, I'm maybe two, four, six, maybe six left. Maybe. This one's a stockier tomato, but I'm perfectly fine with The first year we were in Maine, I uh, had a garden bed about half the size with maybe a little wider, maybe more like a square. Anyway, I had a garden bed. It wasn't this big. And I planted every kind of tomato I could possibly think of it growing in that space not taking thinking oh these little plants I have them spaced enough well I didn't I had way more tomatoes uh, tomato plants than I had space and they were indeterminates and I had no way of holding them because they just keep growing up and uh, we had a, a a storm come in and it was like tomato carnage I couldn't keep them trimmed I and I didn't even know about pruning and I was trying to prune, but I didn't know what I was doing. And it was like tomato carnage. So after that, I was like, okay, this still is pretty crowded. I'm not saying that it's not crowded, but I think if I keep it pruned and I do a good job and I figure out how to support these babies, we're gonna have a great tomato garden, low of pests. The more you keep it pruned in airflow, the least amount of problems that you're gonna have with your tomato plants. But these babies are doing fantastic. So I'll just keep going here. Around. Anyway, that's that. That's how you prune tomatoes. Anyway, thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel. If you have any questions about pruning tomatoes, I'm not a pro. 
I've just learned this over the last couple of years on how to care for tomatoes. I really want to know how to make tomato sauce. These are all paste tomatoes or Roma tomatoes, so I can do that. If you guys have any good sauce recipes, post it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel. Have a great day. What you doing, Toby?